day, everyone. Welcome to Special Interests with Bob and Donna, Bob Van Felder and Donna Durasmo. Uh, for those of you who are, who are uh, visiting our channels for the very first time, I'd like to share uh, our backgrounds with you. I, uh, I was a New York City educator for about 32 years and I've since retired and enjoying retirement out on Long Island. And uh, Bob is a, an award-winning crime thriller novelist, and he's also an outdoors writer. He is a member of the Outdoor Writers Association of America and the New York State Outdoor Writers Association. Uh, he also has the distinction of receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Publication Board of Who's Who of America, so we're very proud of all of his achievements as far as his writing is concerned. Um, today we're going to, oh, just to let you know about our channel, and please subscribe to our channel. We are an eclectic channel, meaning that we cover many, many topics, and uh, we don't just focus in on one, on one theme. And today we're going to uh, be discussing uh, something that is affecting our country at this moment. And Bob is going to be doing uh, most of the uh, information for you. And uh, when, he's, when we're finished here in our living room, we're going to take a trip into our den where he'll continue and then we'll come back. So without further ado, it's your okay. show. All right. The, um, the theme, the thesis of what we're doing here this afternoon <clears throat> is that it's um, high time for law-abiding citizens to arm themselves with concealed carry type pistol licenses. Now, when I wrote this piece, this article, and I'll be excerpting from it, I'll be reading from it here and there thoroughly because I don't want to miss a beat, and then we'll be, I'll be ad-libbing, and uh, from the time that I finished this article, it was right after the El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio, and before the ink dried, before the ink dried, we had, uh, well, six uh, officers shot in Philadelphia. And uh, moments before we sat down here, I don't have the full report, I, it was kind of sketchy now, uh, two mass shootings were averted, two mass shootings were uh, thwarted. Uh, thwarted. Uh, I believe it was a hotel disgruntled cook in Florida. I'm not sure, you know, if that's accurate, or it could be California, whatever. There was a 16-year-old girl who threatened to shoot up a Catholic school. Um, so these were um, averted. Um, it's crazy. It just goes on every day. It's absolutely wild. So in the wake of the formidable El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio mass shootings in which a total of 30 people were killed within a 13-hour period on August 3rd and August 4th this year, respectively, with dozens injured. It is high time for law-abiding citizens to arm themselves with concealed, concealed handgun full carry licenses. And how do you go about doing this? And from there we'll go into a selection. I'm not the authority, I'm not the end all on this, but I'll give you uh, the highlights of uh, what we do, how we arm ourselves, and we do have carry permits, and we'll talk about the gray area of carry permits and sportsman's carry and full carry. It gets well. You also a bit. have to inform the people that we're living in New York, so we're on different Long states Island. Have, we're on Long Island. Well, different uh, states have different rules uh, right. regarding their pistol Absolutely, absolutely, pistol they licenses. do. So you have to do your, you know, your homework in that respect. So um, what I'm going to be doing here is just giving you a reminder, besides of this horrific El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio uh, shooting, um, I'm going to bring you 
I'm going to back up a little bit. Surely you recall the horrific wholesale slaughter of concert goers in Las Vegas, Nevada. Remember that whole issue with the uh, bumper stocks? This guy had uh, oh, from, the Mandal from the Mandalay Hotel. From the yeah. Mandalay Hotel. Uh, listen to these staggering statistics. Maybe you, you, you know about the incident, most of us know about the incident, but it's a good reminder to understand, uh, to revisit the damage that this man did. He shot and killed 58 people. He wounded 422, raising the in, uh, the injury total to 851. Now, when they give these reports, it's usually broken down into those three categories. You have the uh, people killed, people wounded, and people injured. So don't be confused. Say, well, he's injured. Uh, you know, he's wounded. He was injured. Well, we're talking. We're we're making another classification there, if you will. Maybe somebody was running away and glass was flying and he or she got glass in their eye. Maybe they um, tripped and fell and broke their jaw. You know, that's what we're, you know, covering here. So, but back to that, shot and killed 58 people, 422 raising the uh, wounded, raising the injury total, I'm sorry, 422, raising the injury total to 851, 422 wounded. Uh, let's be reminded of the mass shooting in Newtown, Connecticut at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in which 26 people, mostly children, were shot and killed on December 14, 2000. And 12. Now, backing up a little bit to this con uh, the concert goers uh, in Nevada here, um, a handgun on folks, let's say, down below are going to be pretty uh, ineffective when you have this yeah. guy shooting from a <laughs> exactly. you know, high distance. So I don't want to, you know, delude anyone here. There's times that uh, you know, it's it's it not work. going it's not going to play out. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, if someone comes in, enters uh, uh, a facility, and starts shooting, maybe up up front, Donna's up front, and we're dead before we can even think about pulling out uh, um, a weapon from our holsters. But I like to have the chance. Uh, Don and I do not want to be statistics. Uh, if we carry, we'd have that chance. And I'll give you a, a very good example in a moment, uh, a better example of uh, a, a person that would have been dead uh, before he got to shoot a third or fourth victim. Uh, but let's just continue on here. The response to events such as these should be to loosen, not tighten, concealed handgun carry type license laws for law-abiding citizens in order to protect themselves as well as others as we continue down this rather um, perilous path. Um, These senseless murder, murderous acts can and do occur everywhere across America. Malls, busy shopping centers, on the streets of our towns and cities, well-attended events, venues, even our schools, as I mentioned that uh, Sandy Hook Elementary School and shooting. Churches. And churches. When Donna and I first applied for our Suffolk County Sheriff's Office pistol license, the matter was still and is in a proverbial gray area. One faction of law enforcement stated that the licensee could carry concealed from their home to a shooting range, stop along the way and pick up a container of coffee, perhaps a sandwich, visit the restroom, 
even dine out at a restaurant with a proviso that one stay out of the bar area. That's a likely place where trouble could Common occur. Sense. Uh, Donna, you wanted, I should have thought about this early. Uh, grab my wallet from the kitchen because I want to show those licenses and uh, along with another type of license that will extend your traveling throughout uh, 30 states as it currently stands now. <clears throat> another faction of law enforcement stated that the aforementioned stopovers, such as that visit to a bathroom, picking up a sandwich at a deli, uh, dining out or anything, are not permitted. One investigator went 180 degrees on what the initial investigator told us. Without getting into specifics, the pistol license handbook, Office of the Sheriff, County of Suffolk, was, for all intents and purposes, unclear because it did not address these particulars. The whole ball of wax remained in a gray area. Now, Donna, you can't uh, locate my wallet? Check your pocket. <laughs> I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Okay. Um, in fact, one of the law enforcement officers wished civilians did not have concealed carry type licenses, period. Be they sportsman's carry, full business type carry licenses, regardless of the applicant passing a thorough background check. The word carry on that license, uh, on that uh, handgun license, uh, both connotes and denotes that you can carry concealed. And now we're back to that gray area of ambiguity again. Conversely, there is a group of law enforcement that feels quite differently, realizing that a properly trained civilian with a concealed legal handgun license and a loaded weapon on his or her person has the ability to diffuse a potentially volatile situation. Coupled to the latter example is, of course, the possibility of escalation. That is an overt act of violence by the perpetrator displaying deadly force. There is a huge difference among these examples, and a responsibly armed citizen must realize these differences. Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment uh, from excerpting and give you an actual incident that occurred. I was on someone's coattails goose hunting here on the island. And all the other people that were uh, involved on this hunt were local law enforcement, New York, New York State, New York City, upstate uh, sheriff's uh, um, office on, on, on uh, Shelter Island. And um, when there was a break, we had a conversation about handgun carry. And I happened to relate um, the story that I excerpt from where one officer said, yeah, you can do this. You, you got to protect your guns. You're going to have more than one gun one day, and uh, you're going to have maybe two or three sighting in at the range, uh, practicing at the range. You got to protect those guns, and you carry that. And uh, yeah, you can stop into a 7-Eleven, pick up a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, uh, and the other officer that, uh, the other investigator that I questioned uh, after they got through questioning us, taking us into separate rooms, was that, oh, no, no, you, you carry, uh, you put your ammunition in one part of the vehicle, your gun's in the other, and you go to the range, and then you come back. Such a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. Well, here is the great irony. The, um, the folks 
the law enforcement officers that I was uh, goose hunting with said, I will tell, Bob Banfelder, I will tell you the name of the investigator who told you this, and I will tell you the name of the investigator who told you au contraire. And he did. And the <laughs> others confirmed, the others knew who yeah, these yeah, he was individuals mm -hmm. were. So again, it's that gray area. Now, I haven't been down to the sheriff's office. We renew our licenses every five years. Um, but uh, we pick up booklets, the hand booklet, now and then. And it was very ambiguous. It got a little bit better. But a carry permit means that you can carry concealed. OK? Uh, you want to interject anything at this point? No? OK. You want, uh, I wish you could find uh, my wallet. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be nice. Uh, that would be nice if I did. I looked all over. I don't know. Maybe we it. were robbed while we're no, sitting here. No, I don't here. think so. I don't okay. think so. <laughs> OK, so I'm saying, Bob Banfelder is saying, OK, so if, if you're trained uh, and you uh, go through a thorough, and in New York it is a thorough examination uh, uh, that you're going to uh, go through. Um, there's a world of difference between a trained civilian, a well-trained civilian, and a highly trained civilian. So I'm not, Bob Banfelder is not saying, Donna Derasmo is not saying, oh, if you're, uh, you know, uh, trained, you yeah, you should be able to here, carry, yeah. to, uh, no. you know, 24-7. No, no, no. I want to, I would like to see something very, very thorough, such as, such as being trained at a facility that is second to none. Now, granted, not many, of, not everyone is going to go running out to Nevada to a site called Front Site, where they train you and I'll be getting that it's par excellence I'll be getting into that a moment nor are you going to lay out two thousand dollars for a four-day course uh, but if there were and there are other facilities around the country and you really have to check them out um, if you are highly trained uh, I say we should be able to carry in these states full carry no f ends or buts about it and of course having uh you know been investigated and uh thoroughly you know, investigated thoroughly investigated which new york does do there's no question mm -hmm. about that okay so likewise world of difference between trained well trained highly trained blah 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 the best training that a citizen can receive in this country whether he or she is a civilian or one connected with law enforcement is conducted at a firearms facility called Front Sight, and I'm going to spell this, it's Pahrump, P-A-H-R-U-M-P, Nevada. Nevada. Yeah. And to reiterate, for example, at a cost of $2,000 for a four-day course, you will be trained to draw your handgun from its holster, from a concealed holster, and at five yards, deliver two-sided shots to the center of a target in less than 1.5 seconds. That's really an accomplishment. They work you. <laughs> when they veteran, you. veteran police officers and FBI personnel who were initially trained 10 years, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, retired, who were initially trained at police academies and training bureaus throughout the country have subsequently come away from front sight, astounded after having received professional instruction and training at that facility. The one-on-one -on -one approach is superior. Course descriptions and pricing may vary on their website, and uh, Donna, you can just front go site. Down. It's frontsite.com. Very simple. So they would go www.frontsite.com. Yeah, and com. they have a, they have many classes that I mean, they even train train uh, uh, 
I guess, strategic uh, SWAT, SWAT teams to, to shoot from helicopters. Oh, they do. They do anything it all. you can yeah. imagine with a uh, with a rifle, with a shotgun, with a handgun. We're homing in on handguns, you know, in this particular yeah, segment no, they're, here. They're really but, top notch. Uh, they do it all. And if you get uh, high marks from a facility like this, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Now, let's be realistic, too. You could receive the best training in the world, and under a stressful situation, you may fall apart. You never know. There you have to add, you know, that age-old adage, too. You don't know how you're going to act. But um, in these training courses, we're just speaking with a friend uh, the other night at dinner where uh, he was law enforcement, I won't mention any names here, law enforcement, and when he was trained, uh, he went into those group proverbial rooms where you've got uh, a person behind the door to door, they open the door, the door flies open, is it another uh, police, maybe it's a police woman, maybe it's the perp, and you have to make those split second decisions. Mm -hmm. So the training that our friend received was uh, quite something. So anyhow, keep in mind that New York State handgun license background screening is among the most thorough and strictest in the nation. Here's my thesis, and I'm reiterating here. Having passed a background check New York State licensed handgun carry holders receiving professional training at front site or such similar training at an approved facility and having satisfied their instructor's requirements, licensees should be permitted to carry concealed in New York State and elsewhere throughout the nation. We live in New York. I'm not going to talk about Connecticut, Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Um, homing in here on New York. In other words, there should be reciprocity. And there, there is, if I, you, you took the, um, the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, course, and you're able to um, carry in, what is it, 12 states, 20, 23? No, no, 20, 30, 30, 30, states, 30 states, 30 states. It started maybe when we got involved, I'm guessing now, I think it might have been the low 20s, and it went up. Yeah. And just recently, Georgia, Georgia was uh, added to the list. Yeah. Was added to the list, so uh, we're up to uh, 30. Okay, folks, um, at this point, we're going to... Um, stop the film and we're going to take a stroll into our den and uh, Bob will continue there. When we start roll. Okay. okay folks well here we are in our den as promised and I'm going to uh, let Bob continue with uh, the information he's sharing with you today. Okay when the uh, investigators left and uh, was maybe oh how many it took a uh, how many months did it take to get to six or eight months six or eight months so in the interim I had invited the investigators back to our home to tell them what I feel should be mandatory regarding gun owner gun owners and I don't just mean handguns I'm talking about long guns I'm talking about well, rifles, shotguns, muzzle loader, handguns. So let's take a look over, over here what we have. I'm telling the invest I'm telling the investigators, right? Well, I feel very strongly about this. Before it's not this way, but it should be this way. Before you ever have a handgun license you should have a very secure safe. This is an FN Pro Steel Browning gun safe weighing over 500 pounds. It is 60 inches high, 25 inches wide, and is 22 inches deep. It's going to take a lot to break into this safe. Besides, our home uh, is uh, alarm. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, but 
something like this should be mandatory before you are given uh, just not only handgun license, but long guns, as I mentioned, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, I just wanted to point this out. Um, Donna, is there anything you want to uh, talk about? No, here? It, it, uh, just that to let the folks know that it was a job and a half to get this thing in the house. Oh, it, <laughs> it took. It actually took four of us it took four because uh, we had to go up steps and around a very uh, and a savvy sharp engin up. engineering mind <laughs> to figure this out. Okay, okay so uh, we'll go back into the living room and uh, we'll continue. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, we'll continue here in our living room. Okay, back to that goose hunt that I was uh, mentioning earlier, and the uh, and several of us uh, talking about handgun carry. As a matter of fact, one of the officers said, "Bob, let's say you're driving upstate uh, to your son's place." Uh, and you're going to be doing some hunting, some shooting up there, but you have your, uh, your handgun, uh, concealed handgun weapon. And you're pulled over for whatever reason. Maybe the taillight is out, uh, whatever. And the officer comes up and for some ungodly reason says, or maybe sees because I'm a hunter, do you have any guns in your uh, vehicle? Well, yes, officer, I do. Are you carrying by any chance? Yes, I am. Uh, is the uh, is your weapon uh, handgun you carry? Yes, officer. Um, that handgun w would that be a loaded handgun? You look that officer straight in the eyes and you tell him wouldn't carry it any other way, sir. And this this is how this is emphatic. This is what and of course, you. as I mentioned earlier, there are law enforcement officers that do not want civilians, yeah. highly trained or otherwise, carrying. Period. So, so you need to know the laws. You, you need to know the laws. You need to know the laws and obey the laws. Finally, found my wallet. You know what we could have done? We could have, we could have done, gone into your wallet, but uh, you know. Anyways, here is uh, the Let picture. Me. You hold this up here of our uh, carry permit, which does state sportsmen's, Sports, but sportsman's it is carry. a carry concealed uh, handgun license. Now switch over to turn over to the uh, Virginia license, okay. and I'll be talking about that in a moment. In, it, uh, in addition, to Donna's and my state New York pistol license, sportsman's type carry, I made it my business to secure a Commonwealth of Virginia non-resident concealed handgun permit. Why Virginia? I don't, I don't have a second home in Virginia. I don't reside in Virginia. Why? The answer is because the permit offers, as Donna mentioned earlier, reciprocity, allowing me to travel legally concealed in 30 other states. It's important. Uh, Donna and I will be traveling, uh, say, to Florida, uh, visiting friends all, all over. So I would like to uh, be legal, legal, <laughs> Absolutely. you know, in, in the states. Okay. And if I'm going through, if I'm going through uh, a state that doesn't offer, um, you know, uh, doesn't have reciprocity, I'm going to make sure that that handgun is in one part of the vehicle and ammunition is in another part. If you don't, you're inviting, you're inviting trouble. It doesn't really matter in what state you live today, whether in a dangerous city, the suburbs, or an affluent, tranquil town such as Newtown, Connecticut, where those 26 lives were claimed by mass murder. Do you remember his name? Adam Lanza. Adam Lanza. Crazy kid. Mayhem can happen at any time and anywhere. It does not take away from the fact that innocent people are assuredly going to die. 
or wounded or injured. Remember those categories. Um, whether the police respond to a mass shooting in 30 minutes or 32 remarkable seconds, as was the case in Dayton, Ohio, that officers were Johnny on a spot. Those officers in 32 seconds put this perp down. Gunman Connor Betts, B-E-T-T-S. The gunman nevertheless murdered nine innocent people, wounded 17 and injured 10. If you and I were at that venue um, and in walks uh, this gunman and we're up front, probably dead. Mm -hmm. But you have a chance. And, least, if, yeah. and if we're beyond, uh, somewhere in those 32 seconds, if we're in the background, uh, Donna's going to have her gun withdrawn from her holster and she is going to be nailing that perp as I would myself. Again, stressful situations, you never know, but uh, I think we're pretty well trained. We're not trained like uh, front sight, but uh, if they, the authorities, if the powers that be got smart and said, let's open up from facilities like this and offer that because it is high time for law-abiding citizens to carry. Again, to reiterate, I don't want to be a statistic. I don't want Donna to be a statistic. Here is one of my underlying motifs. It's not purely a matter of more gun control that we need. And so, gun control, gun control, gun, that's all you hear about. There is a need for government agencies via law enforcement to effectively work with mental health agencies to determine potential threats. This is, of course, easier said than done because the present laws surrounding these issues are the laws that must be changed and monitored. We've made some strides, but we're not there yet. Remember, we're talking about 50 states. For a person deemed a potential threat, we're not going to wait for something to happen. See, that's, oh, you know, this could happen. Look what happened just uh, moments before um, giving this spiel here on the news. Two mass murders were averted, averted, because they had a handle on uh, these on the people. two people. For a person deemed a potential threat to the public, here's how Donna and I feel. Any and all firearms must be directly removed from that person's place of residence regardless of gun ownership, rifles, shotguns, handguns, etc. Uh, Lance's mother was an enabler. She knew her son had some serious issues, yet she uh, had these, had, uh, these weapons in, in the home, and that should be nipped in the bud doesn't matter who the owner is, the kid wasn't the owner, the mother was the owner, you and do not have access. these handguns. He, he had access, and he to, had the access. to the weapons. Either a gun or guns go or that person goes, period. These are the kind of laws that need to be put into play today. You do not wait for a situation to occur, as I've mentioned. You prevent the situation from happening. Present laws have to be amended and new laws put in place in order to accomplish this sensible approach. We are at a crossroads in this country. The best we can do as responsible citizens at this moment in time is to protect ourselves by arming ourselves. The police are not omnipresent. The police are not everywhere at every moment. And I'll go back to that remarkable 32 seconds of uh, response. You're not going to see that every day. The police no. could not help those 20 children and six adults who were gunned down at Sandy Hook Elementary School 
in Connecticut. We need to responsibly arm ourselves. I'm specifically addressing handguns, which we'll talk about in a moment. Handguns for law-abiding citizens. Let's now zero in on assault-type weapons by first carefully defining our terms. By an assault weapon, I am referring to a military-type assault rifle used in the mass murders at Columbine, murders at Columbine High School in Colorado. Twelve students and one adult was killed and 21 were injured. You remember, you may not remember the statistics, but you remember these mass shootings. In addressing the type of weapon used at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut, I'm referring to assault-type weapons possessing selective fire of either fully automatic fire and or bursts of semi-automatic fire. Not talking about even a big game hunting rifle, you, you don't need a drum with a hundred rounds to go ridiculous. hunt. It's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. Um, I think the guy in El Paso, had, was he the one that had the drum he, with a hundred rounds in it? That's the, uh, that's the character who had that. That should be against the law. Magazine drums holding a hundred rounds out of El Paso carry absolutely ridiculous, ludicrous. I'd venture to say, had some of the faculty at the schools mentioned here, uh, they were armed with handguns. It could have helped, could have helped level the playing field. Let us face certain facts. If an armed gunman has his or my, his or her mind to mass murder people, whether with military type assault weapons, shotguns, sporting rifles or handguns, folks are surely going to die when the perpetrator suddenly opens fire. However, if one of those among us are armed security guards, faculty members, or just plain Joe and Jane citizens licensed but highly trained in the use of handguns, some of us are going to survive and the perpetrator, perpetrators, are going to wind up dead or incapacitated. If legally licensed and highly trained Joe and or Jane citizens had been aboard the Long Island Railroad on that disastrous day, remember Colin Ferguson? Colin Ferguson murdered six people and injured 19 others back in 1993 he would more than likely have been killed or disabled before the third or fourth passenger fell victims, fell victim to the madman's bullets. Six people killed. I'm sitting on the Long Island Railroad. You're, You're sitting, sitting on a railroad. <laughs> You're a sitting duck. But if we're armed, if we're carried, let's say we're at this, uh, down this end of the car, and you see one person shot, two people shot, Reap it before three or four people were shot. Colin Ferguson would have been dead if that was you mm -hmm. and I on that railroad. Returning to the matter of handgun licensing and background checks, after Don and I later received our pistol license, I invited those investigators back to our home to see precisely how we stored our guns for safekeeping. And we just showed you that. And so. we just went through that. If we are away from our homes, those guns are locked away securely. I have suggested to the investigators that this kind of security needed and should be, again I'm reiterating, made mandatory, absolutely mandatory, before any gun licenses are issued. Gun ownership is a serious responsibility. Now, some will say, oh, you know, but I have a safe, you know, I have a little safe like this, but, well, guess what? And some of them aren't bolted down, or some of them are, you know, you can just carry them out, or if they are broke, uh, bolted down, they can be broken to 
so easily. A safe like I showed you inside is 500 pound safe. It's going to be very difficult to uh, break into that. Um, again, take the time to check out Front Sight and other such training facilities. We need to protect ourselves now. Look what's going on every day. I finished the article and I read to you about the Philadelphia, I mentioned the Philadelphia six officers shot. Moments before we turned the cameras on here, we had two mass shootings averted, thwarted. We are at war in this country and losing ground on several fronts. I've had people ask me, Paul, what war? What ground? And where are these fronts? Look around you folks. The war on drugs, home invasions, street gangs, sleeper terror cells throughout the United States, as stated by the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee through her spokesman. There are a large number of terrorist operatives working to undermine this country. So we're not just talking about malls and you know, venues and a lot of people in this area here. There's all kinds of terrorism going on. Seven killed and 46 wounded in a single day in Chicago. Eight people killed and 40 wounded over a July 2019 weekend in the Windy City. Recall the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013 three dead, several hundred wounded, of whom 16 people lost their limbs. Of course, arming highly trained law-abiding citizens with concealed carry handguns and or permits is not the cure-all, or should I say the magic bullet and be cute. However, if Don and I were at an event and suddenly found ourselves under a murderous attack as described throughout this article, perhaps we'd at least stand the chance of protecting ourselves and hopefully others from bodily harm. I'm certain that virtually any victim, dead, wounded, or otherwise injured, would have pleaded for a second chance that I'm positing here. In fact, I bet my bottom dollar on it. Wouldn't it be nice to walk the streets of your cities, towns, and hamlets with some measure of confidence? Wouldn't you like to see your neighborhood a whole lot safer? I'm sure you would. Take the time to write your state legislator and tell them to wake up fast. Better yet, say your piece and send along a copy of this proposal. United we stand, divided we fall, victim. Now, Donna can explain, Donna will explain here um, how to do this. Okay? Well, if you and go it's on um, Robert Banfelder's Facebook page, uh, he posted this entire article and it's a simple copy-paste if that's what you would like to do, if you would like to um, write to your legislator, legislator regarding uh, this uh, topic. You can do that uh, off of uh, Robert Banfelder's Facebook page. Okay, so. The elusive wallet. Put it so it doesn't become elusive again. Let's say you are taking this seriously and say, you know, I am going to arm myself. Bob Banfelder has brought home, uh, reminded us of uh, what has gone on, and it keeps going on, and it's not stopping. So what would be, now we're not the pros here, they're not going to say, you know, oh, this is the gun, because you get a pro to tell you, oh, this is the gun, your first gun for a hand carry, this is what you want you'll get another person say, no, this is the gun that you want. We're going to keep it very, very simple. First of all, when you go to the range, it's nice to practice with a very nice, light caliber handgun. And many of you know out there, 22 is the way to go. Now, 
before our director, Enzo McNazi, came in, I, and I assured him all the handguns were unloaded, that the magazines were, did not have any rounds in a clip. See, that's not good enough. Um, I'm going to take this out now, and I know that this gun is unloaded. However, comma, it's, the, oh, it's always the unloaded gun that goes off, right? All right, so what we're going to do is, and you can see, this is Donna's revolver, and you can see that Donna has a, a laser sight on here, too. This is how I trained her. But Donna's going to look through the chamber, through the... Um, the revolver, the chamber, okay. and let spin it see. around. Let them see. They can see. Okay. I'll point it away from me, but you can see, see? that. But that's, that's not nothing. that's not good enough. What you want to do is just make sure make there's sure. there's no round. There can't be a round no. here because it shoots no through rounds. here. But I just want to, you know, no rounds. if anybody is saying, oh, but there couldn't be a round here. now. this is clear. This gun is empty. But now, not good enough. Not good enough. Um, Safety. Yeah, okay. Safety always. This is a uh, double action. Um, if you have time, if somebody is coming, I don't want to say go arm yourself with a 22. I should really do it with the other weapon. But this is a single fire, double fire, meaning I bring this hammer back, okay? And. Can you see that? Can you? Uh, if you hold it. I bring this yeah. hammer back okay. and I have, um, what is, I'm not getting what Enzo's saying. No, chest. move in front of her. Okay. Just don't point it at me. I bring this hammer back and all I have to do is lightly pull this trigger with about maybe three and a half pounds of pressure. Okay. However, on the first shot, if I didn't do that, if I am just pulling this trigger, you can see the hammer going back. I'm not going to do it all the way. Okay, it's like ten and a half pounds of pressure. So you're going to be a lot, lot sturdy with this three and a half pounds of pressure. Okay, so yeah, that's I Donna's. I don't use that as a concealed. No, no, we're not it's talking about big. concealed here. Too this big. is practice at the range. This is just practicing at the range. And why I chose a revolver, this happens to be a Smith & Wesson 22 um, pistol, it's a very safe weapon to, to learn with. You can shoot yourself in the foot, literally speaking, with an automatic weapon, if you're a semi-automatic weapon, if you're not careful. So that's why I chose... Um, this uh, gun for Donna. Not only that, but I uh, went and I exchanged the, get, uh, the grips and I put on uh, Crimson Trace uh, laser sight for Donna. So where I would have Donna aim at the target, uh, she thought she was, you know, pretty much on target. I would reach across her shoulder and I would put on a laser sight and show her where she was actually shooting, maybe an inch or two to the right or the left, up or down. It's a great learning tool. And I suggest that once you, uh, when, uh, you're a beginner going to the range, start with a very, very light handgun, such as a 22. So now we'll put this back and we'll take a look at my 22. I have a 22. Okay. I have also a uh, Smith and Wesson 22, but this is semi-automatic fire. Every time I pull the trigger, the bullet fires, ejects it, and a new round is put into the okay. chamber and uh, good to go. Okay, I should have done this first. The unloaded gun never goes off. The clip is empty. And the chamber is clear, I looked. Okay, now, you hear what Donna said? Donna, look, let's put this back in here.
Okay, we're going to open it this up. Chest high so they can gonna see op it. Donna looked in here and saw that there was no bullet in a chamber. Not good enough. Put your finger in here. You feel. You see? There's nothing in here. You want to feel. Now, because the round could be flush in here and say, oh, I, I, you know, mm -hmm. it's empty. It's not empty, okay? When you feel that there's nothing, when you see and you feel that there's nothing in here, fine. Turn it around so you can see it. So. You're going to have to direct, because I don't understand hand signals, sir. Look at the back. Are you pointing it at me? No, that's all you should. No, even, even though the gun is empty, you, you don't. It, it at shouldn't anybody. Be. That's, yeah. So that's the best I can do for you to see. Okay? All right. Okay. Put that guy away. Okay. And um, if you're into. Um, uh, shooting. It's it's a lot of fun to go to the range and plink on these metal things and every time you hit it you hear a ping. <laughs> so we like to compete with okay. one another. Now, <laughs> here's what we do. We go off by a box of um, 22 long rifle bullets. 555. This is inexpensive. I don't have the figure but, but it's very, it's very scary. inexpensive. And we could shoot all day if we chose to. When we go to the range, we, we practice a couple of hours mm -hmm. is what we're, I think we do. Okay. And let's talk about these rounds here. Um, I'm going to explain this in a moment and compare it to the other guns we're going to be looking at here. Um, the rifles, 22 rifles that we have and the 22 handguns, they shoot shorts. I'll let you hold this up for the camera. Uh, and let's put these together. They shoot shorts. They shoot long rifle, 22 lo uh, short, 22 long rifle. In between, which I do not have, would be a 22... Um, a 22 long. So it's or maybe you can see 22 it short, later. 22 Wait. long. Just a minute. We don't have one. You see what I'm saying? It would be smaller. Than the here. Yeah, so. Okay. So you can in see other words, size. it would be a little bit bigger than this, a little bit shorter than that. Would be in between. Okay. But we shoot long rifle. Why I have shorts, um, I don't know. <laughs> I have a box of shorts. Are you, uh, okay. You're going to have uh, better accuracy. You have more powder in here. And it's, it's just a nice way to practice. Yeah, I, I know why I have these. Uh, because uh, many, and this is old ammunition, so I don't even bother with the shorts anymore. But uh, well, I don't want to talk about shooting critters, but that's what we would do shoot rats down at the dump and and stuff like that um you're just paying a little bit more for your long rifle you've got more uh, powder in here and um, good to go okay but there's a reason why i want to uh, you know show this uh, difference here when we get into the uh, nine millimeter now okay okay so now i'm going to take out Donna's handgun carry, okay? And again... A lot smaller. <laughs> back. In size. Okay, now I have to turn this around so the camera can see here. And Donna, you can look. First look, is there a round in the chamber? No. Okay, and now feel these. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. Now we know that this gun is... Uh, Unloaded. Loaded. And there is nothing. Nothing in the. Uh, nothing in the magazine. In the magazine. Okay. So. Hold it up so they up to here, so you can see. So people can see. Chest high. I'll do it this way. Chest high. Chest high. And this is a 
Sig Sauer. This is a very, very good company. Uh, it's a Sig Sauer P232 caliber. And why I chose this for Donna was because it is actually lighter than the one that I carry. And we'll do the same thing here. Okay. Let's take the magazine out. Yeah. Empty. Okay. Empty. 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 And Donna, stick your finger in there. You don't see anything, but no. you don't feel anything. No, it's okay. So this Donna's gun. Like looks a little bit, well, let's put them together this way, a little bit smaller. Oh, they're about the same size. Okay. They're about the same size. But this is much lighter. Okay, we're going to hold it up so For a handgun. Go ahead, you hold, hold it up. I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. And a lot uh, shorter barrel so you can, you know, put it in a holster underneath the jacket and you don't have to walk around with it uh, okay, so sticking out. That's yours. Let me have, that's mine, that's yours. Um, what did this is I your want magazine to? Here. Okay, let me just go on some, talk about some weights here, okay? So this is important. Hold up your gun, Donna, for the camera. Okay, SIG Arms 9mm KURZ. 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 It's German for meaning short. It's a 380 caliber model P232 SIG Sauer SL semi automatic, holds seven rounds in a magazine. The barrel is 3.6 inches, okay? So there's nothing wrong with, say, Donna carrying this, but I just wanted her to have a lighter weapon, and I, I, I wish I had the weights down there to show. But look at the, uh, how slim this is, okay? The right end, so you got that? It is. I can Okay. Maybe and get that, get we that can for you. Donna Just can carry carry conceal. We can hold uh, pretend this is going. I'm not going to do, take too much time here. Put the um, the belt through the web. I can put it this way, or I could cant it this way. Okay. So whatever Donna feels more comfortable with, straight up like this, or canted to the side like that. It's a nice, um, nice holster. This you might find interesting. What kind of holster is this really? This part slides under the mattress, between the mattress and the frame, okay? So the gun is sitting in there like that, okay? Very, very accessible. You don't have to open a drawer, make noise. That gun is right there, okay? So that's an interesting holster. And then there's another kind of a holster that would clip, not outside, but inside. You can see the clip in here, on here. And then there's also a place for a spare magazine in here. Good to go. But we like this. We prefer these type of holsters. And um, now let's talk about, is this a good enough, these nine millimeter, and here's where it gets a little confusing, these nine millimeter weapons are 
the lightest you really want to go for self protection out there out there in the um, in, in the street if you will for your carry permit many of you heard of the PPK and that's what this is it's the uh, PPK it's a Smith and Wesson it's not the original from Germany the PPK Walther that you're probably familiar with from uh, James Bond television shows, it wasn't the 9 millimeter Kurtz short. It was a round that looks like this, and you hold this up for the camera. For, and so. The 9 millimeter that James Bond carried was not the short. It was a little bit bigger than this. A little bit bigger than this. Bigger it's taller. Okay. So I, I don't want to, you're going to confuse the issue here from what I'm so about to say. Away. So the analogy that I'm using, just like you have your 22 long rifle and your 22 short, that's what I'll equate to your nine millimeter, well, th uh, it's a point three eight zero, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, your point three eight zero signifies that it is a, um, a Kurtz, a shooting a short round. It is not a, the bigger nine millimeter, millimeter mm -hmm. like uh, James Bond carried. Now, some folks out there will say, this is not enough power to take somebody down. You really want the nine millimeter uh, Luger style like James Bond carried. And some of, some pros out there will say, this is all the power that you need because it's all about shot placement. If you can handle a gun efficiently where you could shoot two rounds off in 1.5 seconds like I was talking about earlier at someone's head or someone's chest. Um, the 9 millimeter isn't going to, uh, your Luger style isn't going to do you any good either. either. Yes, um, this is a very light gun. This is very easy to conceal. If you had the Luger like James Bond carried, uh, say you couldn't carry it here. It's too uncomfortable. It's too big of a gun to carry concealed. If you want to carry concealed, and that's what we're talking about, this is the theme, uh, thesis for this whole thing, you want to carry something like mm -hmm. the, uh, the uh, .380. Uh, and so let me just read off of here, so make sure I didn't miss a bit with the PPK. That's the PPK. Okay says right on here, the caliber, 9 millimeter, so it's confusing, 9 millimeter, oh, James Bond, no, it's the 9 millimeter Kurtz, K-U-R-Z, 380 ACP, and that stands for automatic Colt pistol, it gets confusing, if you walked in uh, to a shop like uh, Dick's and there's a fellow behind or a gal behind the counter that doesn't really know ammunition and you say, uh, uh, I, I want, uh, you know, some uh, uh, nine millimeter. Nine millimeter. <laughs> uh, they're not going to know it's what you're gonna, talking about, fit. okay? Yeah. You've got to go, you've got to say you want the, uh, the 380 ACP and it's on, the, as a matter of fact, it's on the box. It's spelled out. 380, 95 grain, FMJ, Donald, what's FMJ? Jacket. Okay, let's see if we can get the camera. That was a good movie, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's what you really want. Well, let's see if that's what we really want, because we can get into a little discussion here, and I won't take it further than that. You can see... Oh, the, the, dif face. the difference. Okay, I'm going to have to hold it this way so that you can see the tip of the um, round. 
Yeah, and I want to make sure the camera gets this. Enzo, can you get those, uh, or should I come up closer? Okay, you can see this one is hollowed out, okay? And you can see this one is like solid. This is your FM, this is your full middle jet. This is your hollow point. And here's the point I want to make. When you get into a light weapon like this, again, it's all about shot placement, but give yourself the added advantage. You want the hollow point. Why? Because it has more stopping power. It's going to do more destruction. Something like this could go through the body, through a person's body, and come out, and uh, that person could keep going. That person could keep, keep going. Um, could. Okay. With the hollow point, you uh, really have stopping power. So let me see if there's anything else that I want to mm, go here. Twenty-two. No, that's about that's it. The best that will be ammo. Mm -hmm. So your Kurt K U R Z is a short. It's like a twenty-two short. I mean, it's not a twenty-two short, but it's that's the uh, uh, how I want to equate it. If you say, well, no, I want that bigger handgun, well, then go out and get yourself a, a nine millimeter, true nine millimeter Luger style, you know, and uh, you're going to have more stopping power, but you're not going to be able to conceal it as well. And when I'm out there, I don't want people to know I'm carrying, you know, even legally. <laughs> uh, of course, legally. Now, that's for, as I said earlier, out in the street. Now, let's say I don't want to get involved in these handguns, you know, but I want to be able to sleep at night. What if somebody breaks into my home? Okay, well, you see, I, I have this for the home also, but if you don't want to go this route, here is the best thing, and I think any police officer, any cop will tell you, for home protection, a shotgun is your way to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is unloaded. Well, it looks unloaded, but that's not good enough, right? Nothing you feel? In nothing, nothing in there. Okay. This is a pump shotgun, and it's a fancy Dan... Uh, stainless steel one. Why? Because when we had a bigger boat, I would carry this uh, with us when we would travel and travel some great distances. It's a marine shotgun for the marine environment because you know what kind of havoc the marine environment can play on weapons, or you should. Now, this is chambered for, it tells you right on here, for two and three quarter inch shotgun shells or three quarter, uh, I'm sorry, or three inch, okay? Two and three quarter or three inch. Now, let's just take a look. Here's our, and so can you pick that or should Donna hold that? Well, let's see, I like to get them even, let's show the step. Okay, so we'll put them down here, how's that? Two and three quarter, three inch, and three and a half. Correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, I only have one weapon that will that is chambered for the uh, three and a half, and that is my goose gun. When I was telling you when I was with law enforcement officers and all that, this is like New York telephone. You can reach out there and touch someone, okay? You have uh, more pow powder in there. It's a very serious um, um, shell. shell. <laughs> it's not a bullet. <laughs> it's a shell. Uh, but now, there are all kinds of uh, pellets, if you will, that go into these sh uh, shells. And what I'm going to recommend, and I don't think uh, too many people would disagree with this, 
Um, you want what they call double O. You'll have a zero, a zero, a double O buckshot, okay? And generally they have eight, some have nine. Um, Pellets. Point three, two, three, four, three, three, six I've seen, like almost a half, uh, uh, three, well, Third. About a third, third of an inch. Uh -huh. um, and so if yeah. you have, uh, if you have eight or nine of those pellets coming out of a 12 gauge, we're not talking about a small gauge, 20 gauge, 20 sounds higher number, but it's a smaller gauge gun. Talk about a 12 gauge shotgun, you have those nine pellets coming out, out of an intruder in a scatter pattern like this, that's pretty tight, you're going to do significant damage. And for people who don't want to get into handguns, the police will tell you this is the best uh, home defense. choice home for, for home, home defense. defense. Now, there's also single, we talked about OO, also uh, could be spelled or A U G H T, but generally you'll see uh, OO buckshot. There's also single O buckshot and it has uh, more I believe but uh, it's not. I don't like think a, you've ever yeah. used that. No, I haven't. Double, oh. And when I hunt with a 12 gauge shotgun, when I was brought up in the state of New Jersey and even here on Long Island, you use slugs. So the, what comes out of here is a single projectile. So that's about it, um, maybe one more thing, because I have it over here. Let's see, and so maybe you can... This is an aside, if you will. Now, this is certainly not a handgun carry <laughs> concealed uh, weapon, oddly. okay? Oddly. I'm, just, I'm just going to uh, bep it here a bit. It's one of his toys. This is not to be confused like with 380. This is a 308 now caliber. It's a Thompson Center single shot. Can't get into much trouble. And you can see the size of the chamber. I should stick my finger here. You can Actually, see, there's but nothing there. yeah. there's nothing in there. Okay. Hunting. This is this hunting. This is your hunting pistol. And here's the bit of be Bebetsing. My son, in the uh, Ithaca area, he gets 39 um, acres. And I am saying, oh my God. <laughs> calls me up and he says, hunting Dad, paradise. you know, it's a hunting paradise. You come up here and he die. Here's the keys, Donna, blah, blah, blah. Um, guess what? The county that Jason is in, um, I won't even name the county. I'm just going to be not Ithaca area. So. Ithaca area. Um, it's the only county, all the surrounding counties, New York, you can shoot. A 308 projectile. Rifle. Rifle. But you can't shoot. You 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 can't shoot the rifle. In in where in uh, Jason's county, Jason's County, you can't. Ithaca, so they it's Ithaca, Tompkins it's County. County. I didn't want to play. All of all, all the surrounding the, counties, you can you can shoot, you can shoot the shoot three, 308 rifle. So how did no I get around shooting. it? It's legal. I checked it out. As a matter of fact, I have an FBI strong acquaintance who said, no, you can I bought up state, blah, blah, blah. but he didn't buy in that, uh, in, that area. in that area. As a matter of fact, we went in, not because of uh, the statement, but we went into the police station. Forget the manuals, forget this. I walked into the police station with Donna. We made sure that in Tompkins County, I could shoot the uh, 308, 308 pistol. pistol. So, that, so that's how I got around it. But what's happening? Tell them what's happening now. No rifle now. shooting now. Well, the, um, the uh, gun clubs are uh, 
trying to get uh, permission during big game hunting season for uh, hunters to be able to uh, use rifles to, uh, to shoot uh, big game, just during the, the big game hunting season. But um, we'll, see what hap we'll see what happens to that, with that. But in the meantime, Bob has the 308 pistol, which is thoroughly legal. And I did get my first uh, deer at 38 yards, offhand position yes. with this with weapon. It is awesome. Uh, it's called the Encore. It's the model Encore. And Thompson Center is known for Folks may be curious of what this pump I, I'm is. I'm just going in <laughs> there. Just go. Whereas you saw that Donna and one of my weapons here had the <laughs> laser sight. This is not a laser sight, this is a holographic. So it doesn't shoot the light. What it's it does EOTech. is the light lights up in here. It's I'm not an going EOTech to. It's a EOTech holographic sight. It's a holographic sight and uh, deadly accurate. You put that light, that sight, on uh, the vitals of I'm a deer hunter, uh, it's, it's good to go. People's Single shot? Why didn't you get a semi-automatic? All I need is one shot. Not that I'm you so shoot wonderful. Once they're gone you shoot they're you, you just, anyway. you just can't. Uh, <laughs> and you don't go to the range and practice over the box of ammunition, uh, say even 20. Uh, first time I handled the gun, uh, my hand was bloody. It's so heavy. so when heavy. I practice and I shoot maybe 20 or 30 rounds, uh, I, have a, I have a glove, a special glove, pistol glove. Yeah, that's and I tell them a, a funny story. We go to the range when I first got this gun, and I check. I'm so, you know, so careful Overly with everything. Cautious. Overly everything. I go up to the range officer and I said, "Okay, now uh, do I go to the pistol range? I just want to make sure this is a pistol." Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Now you shoot at the <laughs> pistol range. I was there a half a dozen times, and then another time we came in. And the uh, range officer, another range officer, approaches me and he says, you can't shoot this at the pistol range. I said, wait a minute. I've been here like five times. I ask and I checked it out. He said, well, I'm the, uh, I'm the range, range officer. officer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so you know, where were you the other times? <laughs> he, he understood that. Some of these other guys, I'm not going to say that they're lax, but the, uh, no, they you just know. Don't. They, they, they just really didn't know. So I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I just got this gun maybe, uh, like I said, down here five times. I'm shooting, the, I'm, I can't hit the broad side of a barn with this. You know, taking everything. He said, this is not a gun for the pistol range at six yards, 10 yards. 50 the, yards. The, yeah, he me. said, we're going to go over to the rifle range with this. I said, but I can't hit shit from China with... Uh, with this gun, he says, no, you come with me. 100 yard range, I can't hit anything. But So we go to the 100 yard range and he makes a couple adjustments for me. And he says, okay, you see the targets? I said, yeah, I see the targets. He said, well, I don't want you to shoot at the target, or targets. I want you to shoot between the targets at the berm. There's a berm. The targets are along this berm. And you see the white rag that's placed between the targets? In the berm. So we're going to see where you're hitting, and then you'll adjust your sight. But let's see what happens. I take this thing. I can't hit anything in a pistol range. I take this thing after he fussed with it at 100 yards. And I'm going to see where around the rag I hit. Tell them what I did. You hit the rag. I hit the rag. I could not believe it. Yeah. So he said, okay, now, now we're going to the 200-yard range. Yeah. Holy shoot. Uh, it's very accurate. Very accurate. I, let's say I was on paper, okay? In other words, uh, I was in the, uh, not the bullseye, but I was, you know, on the target. And then I practiced. And I got proficient at 200 yards, but up where I hunt, like 50, 60 yards, yeah. that that stops, you know. So I think we'll wrap it up. I think that's it. Okay, but um, if you um, 
check out uh, Bob's Facebook page, Robert Banfelder. Uh, the entire uh, article is there for you to uh, to read and to and to copy and to comment if you care to. And um, I hope the information here was helpful to you. And uh, we'll see you next time. And please subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you thought the information was helpful and give, give you something to think about anyway, folks. So uh, have a great day, and thanks for watching Special Interests with Bob and Donna. Until next time.